welcome back everybody. Uh, we're going to continue on with acids and bases and we'll start talking a little bit more on some of the calculations that you need to do today. The general equation for acids is that you have an acid plus a base and you get a conjugate acid and a conjugate base and this creates an equilibrium. An acid-base pair example would be ammonia plus water gives you ammonium plus the hydroxide ion. Water is considered a conjugate because it's got acids and bases in its, in its synthesis. So when water ionizes, it falls apart into these separate ions, and this is called self-ionization of water, but it's only a small amount. When it is this total, it's a neutral solution. So when the number of hydrogen ions equal the number of hydroxide ions, you get 10 to the negative seventh molar. And that means that our water constant is 10 to the 14th because we, multi we add those two together. That should be an addition sign, I apologize. So the KW is also known as the ion product constant. So the KW is constant in every aqueous solution. If we know one concentration, either hydrogen or hydroxide, we can figure out the other. So if the hydrogen ion is, concentration is greater than 10 to the negative seventh, then the hydroxide ion concentration is less than 10 to the negative seventh and it's acidic and vice versa for basic. This gets into some tricky math because it all deals with logarithms, and logarithms are powers of 10. They serve as shorthand for really big or really, really small numbers. So pH is the negative log of the hydro hydrogen ion concentration. So in a neutral solution, pH equals the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, or 7. In an acidic solution, remember, hydrogen ion concentration is greater than 10 to the 7th, so pH is negative log of 10 to the negative 7th, so pH is less than 7. Therefore, bases have a pH of greater than 7. The pOH is just the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And again, when you take the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, you get 1 to the 10 times 10 to the negative 14th molar squared. So pH plus pOH equals 14. Always, always, always. Strong acids and bases are strong electrolytes, which means they fall together completely apart in solution. Weak acids and bases don't completely ionize, and strong acids and bases form many ions when dissolved. So, for example, magnesium hydroxide is a strong base. It falls completely apart when dissolved. When measuring strength, remember that ionization is reversible and it makes an equilibrium. The acid dissociation constant, the Ka, can be calculated by taking the concentrations of the various ions divided by the concentration of the compound prior to dissociation. Stronger acids give more products and result is a larger Ka. Strong bases also dissociate completely. We can ignore the water because the concentration doesn't change of water. So stronger bases have a higher Kb because the more they become more dissociated. Okay, so now we're going to practice this. So the first one says write the expression for HNO2 and then write the Kb for NH3. So we're going to do that on the other slide right here. Okay, so the first one says write the expression for HNO2. So here's our HNO2 and we're going to dissociate it. Remember, you come up with the hydrogen ion plus the anion, so NO2 minus 1. So that's our complete equation or expression for HNO2. Now we're going to write the Kb for um, NH3. So we know that first you have to write the expression. So NH3 
breaks down, well, sorry, we're going to add it to water. And that gives us the ammonium ion plus the hydroxide ion. Okay, so now what we do is we find the KB. Step two. So that's going to equal the product's concentration, NH4, plus times OH minus divided by the concentration of what you started with, which was NH3. Now, can we go further than this? No, we can't because we don't have any numbers in order to put this in there. But this is the expression for the KB for ammonia. Okay, so let's go back to our questions and take a look at these neutralization reactions. Remember, acids plus bases equals salts plus water. Salt is any ionic compound, not just NHCl. And water, it can be thought of as HOH, so that you can remember that these are just double replacement reactions. So for the first one, we've got, I want you to take note of this, and if you've got the printed handouts, you'll be able to see them. But HNO3 plus KOH, second one is HCl plus KOH, and then NaOH plus H2SO4. So let's go back to our handy dandy little paint program. New one, don't save. Okay, so now we're going to do the first one. So HNO3 plus KOH. Remember, it's just double replacements of these two exchange places. So we have KNO3 plus H2O or HOH. Second one was HCl plus KOH. Again, double replacement action, uh, reaction, so it's just KCl plus H2O. And then the final one was H2SO4 plus NaOH. Well, this isn't going to actually come out right until you balance it. So we're going to do the skeleton equation first, and then we'll balance it. So we've got H2O plus, and remember SO4 is a minus 2 polyatomic ion. So that means we need 2 here. So we put 2 here and 2 here, and we've got a balanced reaction. So we have Na2SO4 plus 2H2O. The one key ingredient to remember is that all reactions happen in moles. Okay, because that's how we determine what we're doing. So let's take a look at these questions. It says, how many moles of HNO3 are needed to neutralize 0.86 moles of KOH? And then you write and balance the reaction first. So we get HNO3 plus KOH gives you KNO3 plus H2O. So I'm going to write that out on this slide right here. So new one, don't save. So we've got HNO3 plus KOH yields KNO3 plus H2O. All right, so we know that we start off with 0.86 moles of KOH because that was given to us in the equation, or in the question, I mean. So then we do our molar ratio, because we're already in moles, so we don't need to convert. So we do our molar ratio. So there's one mole of KOH, and we're interested in finding HNO3, and there's one mole of that. So that's going to give us, it's just one to one, cross out these, so it's just 0.86 moles of HNO3. Ooh. That was interesting. Okay, so that's a pretty easy example. So let's try the next one. So our next one is going to be how many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed to neutralize 3.5 moles of magnesium hydroxide? Well, that's going to be a little bit more interesting. So remember, the first thing we do is we write and balance the equation. 
always, 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 always underline it, put puppies and smiley faces next to it. Always write the equation out first. So we know that we're adding HCl to MgOH2. And we know, because you guys are really good at your polyatomic ions, that, sorry, that's OH2. Do, do, do. So the OH is a minus 1, so that means that magnesium has to have a plus 2 state. This is a minus 1, and this is a plus 1. So when we do the double replacement reaction, we get MgCl2 to balance the charges, plus H2O. Well, we don't have two Cl's, so we got to add it here. We add it here, and now we're balanced. Okay, so in the question it says we started off with 3.5 moles of MgOH2. So we're already in moles, so we don't have to convert, so we just do the molar ratio. So we've got one mole of MgOH2 to two moles of hydrochloric acid. That's why balancing the equation is important first. So in order to get a neutralization reaction, we have to add 7.0 moles of hydrochloric acid. So we'll get a new one. Don't save. Go over here. OK. So remember that these reactions, these acid-base neutralization reactions, usually happen in solution. So we're going to take a look at these questions. Um, I'm going to do the first one, and then the second one you're going to do on your own, on your own time. But you're welcome to check your answer with me during office hours. OK, so let's take a look at the first one. It says, if it takes 87 milliliters of a hydrochloric acid solution to neutralize 0.67 moles of magnesium hydroxide, what is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution? Okay, so one of the things that you need to remember is that we're talking about molar, the big M. So molar means moles per liter. That's one thing that you need to remember, moles per liter. So now we're going to do the reaction first. So we have HCl plus MgOH2 which is the exact same one we did before. So we know we need two here. We get magnesium chloride salt plus two waters. So we've balanced the reaction first. Now we do our equations. So we're starting off with a known quantity of 0.67 moles of MgOH2. So then what we do is we do the molar ratio. And we get 2 moles of HCl for every 1 mole of MgOH2. So our molar concentration is just 1.34 moles of HCl, but it's asking you what the concentration is, and that's in molar. So remember, we got moles now. Now we need to find out the liters. So it gives us how many liters we have in the question. It says 87 milliliters. So that's in liters, 0 0.087 liters. So when we divide this out, we get 15.4 molar HCl. So that's the concentration we need. The second one that we're going to do, doop, 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 doop. sorry, that was a previous lecture. OK, the second one you're going to do on your own. So if it takes 58 milliliters of a sulfuric acid solution to neutralize 0.34 moles of sodium hydroxide, what is the concentration of the sulfuric acid solution? So you're going to do that section on your own. And again, you're welcome to check your answers with me over office hours, and I'll be happy to do that with you. OK, so let's take a look at the concept of titration. When you add the same number of moles of an acid and base, the solution becomes neutral. By measuring the amount of base added, you can determine the concentration of the acid if you know the concentration of the base. That's kind of the key part. 
This is a titration. And basically we use an indicator to tell you when you got to neutral. So what we say here is says MA times BA times the number of hydrogen ions equals MB times VB times the number of hydroxide ions. So what this really means is the moles of hydrogen equals the moles of hydroxide. That's really all this means. But the M is the molar concentration, the V is the volume. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of these practice equations. So again, I hope you have your printout. Um, and we're going to do the first two and you'll do the third one on your own. So the first one says, if it takes 45 milliliters of a 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize 57 milliliters of a hydrochloric acid solution, what's the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? So we're going to do that on our handy dandy little paint program. So we're going to go over here, new, don't save, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the first thing we do always is to write and balance the equation. So we have NaOH plus HCl gives us, remember it's double replacement, so NaCl plus water. Now we know that this is balanced, so we don't have to do anything else to it. So we have a 1.0 molar solution of sodium hydroxide and 45 milliliters of it. So what we do is we find out what the number of moles of NaOH is. Okay, so we know we've got 45 milliliters to start. And we do it out of a liter, so that's 1,000 milliliters, times 1.0 molar. So that gives us 0.045 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so now we have our moles of sodium hydroxide, and that's what we had to find first. Remember, our moles of the acid equals the moles of the base. So we have 0 0.045 moles of sodium hydroxide. Then we do the molar ratio, and we've got one mole of hydrochloric acid to every one mole of sodium hydroxide. So that means that we have also 0 0.045 moles of hydrochloric acid. But the concentration is different because it tells you that you had 57 milliliters of that. So remember we got to find molar and molar equals moles per liter. So we've got 0 0.045 moles of hydrochloric acid divided by 57 milliliters. Well, 57 milliliters is 0 0.057 liters. And that gives us a molar concentration of 0 0.789 molar HCl. And that's how we do a basic trituration. So I'm going to do the next one. I'm not going to flip back to the slide because you should have the next um, slide up. The second equation asks you if it takes 67 milliliters of a 0.5 molar sulfuric acid solution to neutralize 15 milliliters of aluminum hydroxide, what was the concentration of the aluminum hydroxide? Okay, so first thing we do is we do the skeleton equation, H2SO4 plus AlOH3 gives us AlSO4, we've got to balance the charges, so Al2SO4-3 plus water. Well, we have to balance it, and you guys can balance molar equations now, so it's 3, 2, and 6. So the first thing we do is we start off finding the number of moles of H2SO4. So we know we have 67 milliliters divided by 1,000 milliliters, and that's our volume, times our molar concentration. So that's 0.5 
moles per liter. Okay, now why do I do the thousand milliliters? Because that's equal to a liter, so we're just dividing by a factor of one. So what we get is we get 0 0.0335 moles of sulfuric acid. Sorry, that should have been like that. Okay, so now we've got the moles of sulfuric acid. Now we got to do the molar ratio to find out how many moles of aluminum hydroxide we're dealing with. So we start off with 0 0.0335 moles H2SO4. Then we do our molar ratio. So we have 2 moles of AlOH3 divided by 3 moles of H2SO4. So that gets rid of that unit. And we end up with 0 0.0223 moles of AlOH3. Okay, great. So now we have that, and we have to take the known number of milliliters that we had, which was 15. So we take 0 0.0223 moles divided by 15 milliliters, which is 0 0.015 liters. And we get a molar concentration of 1.49 molar AlOH3. And that's the answer to the question. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and go to a new one. So again, you're going to do the third one, which says how much of a 0.275 molar hydrochloric acid solution will ne be needed to neutralize 25 milliliters of a 0.154 molar um, sodium hydroxide. So in this case, you're finding the volume, not finding the molar concentration. Okay, so let's talk about solubility. Solubility is also an equilibrium because dissolving stuff is an equilibrium. The concentration of a solid doesn't change, so we can combine it with the equilibrium constant. The KSP is called the solubility product constant, and the more soluble a solid is, the greater the KSP. This is used for slightly soluble salts. Generally, you don't have to deal with finding KSP for really soluble stuff. You can tell from the KSP if a precipitate will form. If the answer is bigger than the KSP, a precipitate will form. Remember, a precipitate means that a solid comes out of solution. If the answer is smaller than the KSP, it will all stay dissolved. Okay, so that was just a brief introduction of solubility. We'll go on into solutions in the next lecture. You guys have a great day.